This tutorial is an adaptation of a Photoshop tutorial which looks at trying to replicate an old style of photography which is wet plate photography. Um, I don't know the ins and outs of wet plate photography but as far as I can understand it is basically you put some light sensitive chemicals onto a piece of glass and then you expose the glass and then the image will end up on that piece of glass um, but it does also leave some sort of texture from where the liquids were like around this image here now I think it does work best when the subject which I think nine times out of ten with wet plate photography was portraits it wasn't like landscapes but I'd, I'm not to say they can't do landscapes um, I think it was better with a light background I have tried this with a darker background it still does work but I think it does work better with a light background so I'm going to try this with this image I've not actually practiced on this image so I, I myself don't know how this will turn out now all these images that I've got here so far I've got from pixabay.com and I will add links to this image and the texture that we're going to need you also you will also need a texture for this um, we will look at the end of this video about where to get some textures but you can either take your own texture images or download them from various sites on the internet so first thing I'm going to do is we need the texture to be in black and white so I'm just going to quickly convert this to black and white so I'm just going to add the black and white adjustment and I'm just going to just have a slight tinker with this so that the there's a bit more contrast in the image so those ones don't have much this is probably a bit too dark and then once I'm happy with it I'm just going to merge that in so that is just the one layer and for the actual image itself this particular one I cropped it down because there was a lot of extra white space on this side and I pre-cropped this down because I don't necessarily need all that extra space on the side but that is a personal choice for what you want to do so to start the tutorial properly um, the first thing you want to do with your main start image is to duplicate it so we'll just right click on this layer come down to duplicate or you can do control and J or command and J uh, any future point I say control and something it will be also command and J or whatever letter on a Mac and control and whatever letter on a PC so I'll just duplicate that and with the duplicated layer highlighted we we'll come up to filters sharpen and high pass now yeah I've set this on four but you know you can do four five six whatever depending on your image just so you've got a sort of a rough idea of what the image is behind and then just click apply and then we once that has done that we're going to change the blend mode from normal to overlay and this will just make that image slightly sharper if I just tick on the X here hopefully you can see there's very very slight improvement in the sharpness of this image it was a fairly sharp image to start with so we're okay there so once we had those two layers the first next thing you want to do is to right click and come down to merge visible so that layer is now a combination of the two layers below it and the next thing we're going to do is to add a bit of blur to this and we're going to come up to filters blur and coming down to lens blur 
and we want a radius of roughly 10 I've got here 9.9 .9, but roughly about 10 and the number of blades is 5 I think if I remember correctly these are the only two that I've altered these were just the default settings but blade curvature is 50 bloom threshold is 85 bloom factor is 100% and bloom color is 0 and then I'll just click apply to that wait for that to do its job my computer's running a bit slow at the moment I've got a lot of things open okay so once we've added that bit of blur next we're going to add a bit more blur so, and this, so again we're going to come back to filters blur and this time we're going for motion blur. Now I've got the radius set on 15 pixels and the angle is set on 10. Now if I remember correctly by default you can sort of it, it's preset the amount of positions that you can rotate this but if you want a specific number you can just double click inside and then enter the number that you want. So I want it 10, so I will leave it on 10. And again, click apply. So now what we want to do is to add a, a layer mask to this layer. So making sure that this is the one highlighted and going to click on this square here with the black dot in the middle and add a layer mask to that to layer there and what we're now going to do because that is now the layer that is highlighted so this is the layer that we're going to be working on and we then want the paintbrush tool so you can either just press B on the keyboard or click on this tool here and you want the hardness to be on zero and the opacity I'm just going to raise this up slightly I'll go this to about 70% roughly size wise mine's currently on 586.9 I'll just increase this slightly you can increase and decrease this by pressing the square bracket keys on the keyboard I'll just increase that so that's now on about 892 and the color that we want because the mask is a white mask we want the color to be black and painting black onto a white mask will reveal uh, will take away the effect that we have on this so we will be removing the blur effect that we've added um, and what we're going to do is sort of take that blur effect away from the eyes mainly probably the nose and the mouth just that those features are really sharp and the areas around the outside will be a bit more blurrier and just lower that opacity slightly come down a bit to about 50 percent and i'll just just go over the nose and the mouth a few times so there we go the main features of the face are now sharp and hopefully the as you can see this at the the hair and the chin and what have you and the hands and the body are still blurred so once you're happy with how you've got your image to look we want to next add the um, add highlight the top layer so it includes the mask as well but we're going to add a channel mixer so we're going to go to the adjustments icon which is down here 
and come up to channel mixer and I'm going to change this from RGB to grey so basically turn in the image black and white and I'm going to raise the intensity just so the um, the overall image comes a bit brighter and you can also just lower the alpha very fractionally maybe just to make the rest of it a bit darker around the, where the you know, the image of the person is that you are doing this effect on so uh, the whole image is a bit more contrasty so I can now close that down next I want to add a levels adjustment so again I'll come down to the adjustments icon down here and come up to levels and what I'm going to do now I don't seem to have a histogram here I'm not 100% certain why but we're just uh, um, we want to sort of muddy the image slightly and darken the background a little bit um, so I'm just going to it's very hard to work this out when I don't have a histogram I'm not 100% certain why um, and I'm just probably many because it's, you know, it's nearly all black or just white so there's not a lot for this for um, tool to work with but I've just moved the black levels to 2% and I've just moved the gamma slightly to the right to 1.1 1 .1. so again it's just sort of made the image a bit more darker in places so I'm happy with that so I will close that one down now next thing we now want is the texture so like I said I have the texture here I've already made it into black and white so I'll just right click this and come to copy come back to the image I'm working on and come to edit paste and control or control and V if you want the keyboard shortcut and that will paste whatever texture you pick as a layer above all the other layers now I just need to resize this so I'm going to come to the move tool and I'm just going to resize it so it fills the whole of this image so I'll just do that there we go I am happy with that. It doesn't really, really matter so much, but you could, um, you know, if you wanted to have a check on the effect, you could just lower the opacity and see where this effect mainly is going to be happening. But like I said, I'm I'm happy with where that is. Um, you may need to rotate the image, especially if the texture you have is in, say. Uh, a landscape and your image is in portrait you may just want to twist it around but, but basically just fit it where you want it to fit and then you want to change the blend mode of this to screen so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer so I'll just right click come down to duplicate or you can use the control J keyboard option and what I'm going to do I'm just going to slightly increase the size of this layer so that it's not exactly sitting on top of, of the other one so I'm just going to move it slightly out to the right and left and 
top and bottom. Right, so as you can see now that sort of gives a sort of broken up blurred effect but I'm now going to come to the layer and invert and you can do control and I or do it this way and that will invert that texture but we're also now going to change the blend mode it will be on screen still because that's how it was duplicated but we're going to change this to multiply the next thing we're going to do is to I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to click on this lower background texture layer so that both of these are highlighted and then I've let go of the control key and I'm going to right click and I'm going to group these together or you can do control and J G I mean sorry control and G so now that these two are grouped together anything we do to them now will affect both at the same time and once we're going to do that we're going to lower the opacity of this textures that are grouped together down to about 15 percent again it will depend on your particular image it depends on how much of this texture you want in the background and how it will affect um, your image um, this particular one I'm going to leave that on 20% I think and then I'm going to add a layer mask to the group so again it's like it was before just click on layer mask and that will be added to the group and so now we're going to do is I'm going to remove some of this textures so again I'm going to come to the paintbrush tool black will be the paint uh, color we're going for because it is a white layer mask and I'm going to remove some of the texture that's over the image and just sort of leave it on the background behind so again we've got hardness at zero and as I've, I've got quite a large area I'm going to just increase the opacity maybe to around 60% and I'm going to increase the brush size so I'm only going to remove it from the face and the body area so we're just removing the texture really you could leave some of it on that is up to you your personal preferences but I think personally for me it works best if it's really just in the background area right, nearly there right I think that'll do I've got rid of most of it there's a few bits of texture just creeping into the um, lady's image but mainly the effect is in the background so theoretically that would be the end of this um, tutorial and you could save and export it under a new name now you could take this slightly one step further which I have done with this one here um, you could add a frame um, there are two frames that I've tried there's this one and there is this one um, you can get frames I can't remember where I got mine particularly I think I, I think they came free from um, a magazine disc that I had many moons ago um, but basically you can get lots of frames from various sites um, on the internet so you can try them out so first of all let's try this one here which was the which was that one and I just rotated it and put it onto the above the image and changed the blend mode to screen because these frames have white background and the black and when you change it to screen the areas that are black on this frame will allow the image to come through 
So that was that frame. Hide that one. And the other frame was this one. So that is an effect that you can add extra. So this wasn't on the Photoshop tutorial. So let me try this. Oh, let me try this one. I'll try that one. I'm going to right click this one and copy it. Come back to the image that I was working on. And then I'm going to edit and then paste or control and V. So as you can see, again, this is quite smaller than the target that I'm aiming for. So I'm going to come to the move tool. First thing I'm going to do is to rotate it. So above the edge of this, you can see that there is a a white dot up top here. And if you put the cursor near the top of it, it will change to a double-ended curved arrow. So I'm going to hold down the control key and just click and hold this and turn it round. In fact, what I should have done is hold down the shift key, I think. Because then that will move it in set steps. So it's a lot easier. That's better. Shift key. Sorry, not the control key. And then I'm just going to put it roughly in the middle. Then hold down the control key. And I'm going to resize it. Holding down the control key will keep everything in the same proportion So this time I'm going to actually make it much bigger to lose that white outline just to see what it looks like like that and then I'm going to change the blend mode again to screen yeah just to add a few extra scratches and what have you to that image I don't know whether that the scratches and whatever you are an effect of wet plate photography but considering it was supposed to be a very old uh, process this image could have been uh, sitting around for a long time and gathered a few scratches over the years so that is the end of the tutorial so whether you added the frame or not you have to remember to save and or export it under a new name so like I said, that is the end of the tutorial. Now I'm going to add a bit on the end of this video, which looks at where to get textures from online for free. So if you can continue watching, if you want to know more about that. Okay, we're just going to have a look at some places where you can get some textures. Um, there are plenty online, um, and this is just a small selection of where you can get some from and I will add links to all these sites into the description of this particular video now the probably most people will probably go to um, image sites like Pixabay where I got the my texture and the image of the lady that I used in the video um, they are really mainly for proper images if you for want of a better phrase but if you want texture you can just type something like texture into the background uh, the search engine and then it will come up with all sorts of textures that you can try and use another image site that is quite good for this sort of thing is um, rgbstock.com Again, you can just type in textures, but there's also along the bottom here, you've got some options and you could just click on to textures and it will have all sorts of different textures that you can try out. And these are technically sort of image sites, um, but there are some sites that sort of really just deal with textures. Now, one of them is freestocktextures.com. So again, they got, you know, they got some options down here that you could use, or you can you can do the search for it. And let's, let's just try concrete and see what options we come up with. So there you have various textures that you can use there. And the next one is textures for Photoshop. 
example, just because it says it's for Photoshop doesn't mean that you can't use it on any other type of uh, digital photographic program like Affinity Photo. So again, you could just put in something. So let's put in Rust, for example, and see what we come up with. working believe me or not there we go we've got some rust textures that you can try and the last one we're going to look at is textures.com again you've got some set options down here let's try plastic see what that comes up with so you've got various plastic options you do also have the actual main sort of options down the side here. So these are places where you can get textures to add to the image that you're working on, be it as a background or like I've used it as an sort of overlay. And there are some very good sites and as I said there are probably many many more out there if you just do a quick search for them. So that is the end of this look at where you can get some textures so thank you for watching and goodbye